Phase 4 has been out for a couple of days now, and we know the location of all the available new runes in Phase 4. This guide in particular will be going over the Paladin and where to get every new rune for the Paladin step by step so you don't miss a beat. Because they have been quite buggy since Phase 4 has launched and it could help answer some questions if you've been struggling. Getting it started, we'll first be heading over to the Stormwind Library to get the old runes that were converted into skill books, which are now purchasable from Milton Sheaf. You can also obtain the Enhanced Blessings book from here if you've never grabbed it from Scarlet Monastery in the previous phases. While we're in Stormwind, we'll move over to the Cathedral Square and you'll find a short quest dialogue from the Paladin Trainer, Catherine the Pure, which you'll just complete instantly granting you the Divine Steed Rune. Moving on to the main cloak runes, you'll want to do them in a particular order, especially while you're leveling and I'll touch on the reasons why shortly. Starting with the Righteous Vengeance Rune, you'll want to come to this location in the Western Plaguelands and talk to a Fallen Knight. He will then have you find Squire Cuthbert, who sits in the back left corner of a nearby barn. You will then need to look in the field and find a sword. Don't worry, it will be a lot easier for you to see than this as it will be glowing unlike as you're seeing right now because I've completed the quest. Take the sword back to the Squire and you'll receive a follow up quest called Clearing the Path, asking you to kill undead in the surrounding area. You'll need to kill 5 blighted zombies, 10 skeletal terrors and 10 rotting cadavers. At any level the mobs are easy to kill but they can respawn quite fast especially if there's a lot of mages AoE grinding in this spot. You will then return to the squire who you will escort out of the barn to the fallen knight. If the squire is not there and somebody is already escorting it at any point it's fine. You do not have to do it individually. You can just go straight to the fallen knight and hand it in all with the squire there. Finally you'll want to burn the body of the fallen knight and you'll be given the righteous vengeance rune and a follow up quest from the squire. If the squire disappears after burning the body you need to just head back into the barn to find him. The follow up quest starts the chain for the shock and awe rune as well as avenging wrath. This is the reason why they need to be done in a particular order as it's a chain. Accepting the quest from the squire will give you a relic called Doughton's Horn. You'll want to instantly use it to summon your squire. You will need to level up your squire so preferably while leveling you can have your squire out or if you're max level just have the squire readily out for any kind of quest or dungeon that you're doing. There are reports of the squire struggling to level up if you're max level, but I'm unsure if that's still the case, so you should be fine. Once the squire levels up, he'll go from level 55 to level 58, and you'll be able to tell because he'll have a quest mark above his head, which when accepting will give you a new version of Dalton's Horn, and you'll need to summon your upgraded squire again for the next step of the process. Continue to have this squire out while leveling and occasionally heal the squire. We're not fully sure what the actual trigger is for the squire to level, whether it needs to gain some sort of hidden experience and then receive healing, or whether it's just a chance on healing. Either way, it definitely has something to do with healing your squire, as I had my squire out while leveling for a long time, unsure why he wasn't leveling until a little birdie told me to heal him and he instantly dinged, offering a new quest. At which point you'll once again get an upgraded version of Dalton's Horn, and once summoning your new squire will instantly have a quest called A Time to Kill. This then sends you to the Eastern Plaguelands to find and kill a Lich by the name of Arkonos the Cursed, which you'll find at this location. When you get to this location, find Arkonos and your squire will then offer another quest to be able to take down the barrier preventing the Lich from being attacked. This will have you kill mobs outside until you get a drop, which will only drop from Dreadweavers and Shadow Mages. Once you get the drop, you'll be able to pick up the final quest from the squire asking you to kill Arkonos. The mob isn't too hard, I managed to solo him at level 56, just make sure you have divine shield ready if you need to use it and you can start the fight by using the item on the lich. Once killed you can hand in the final quest with your squire to obtain both the shock and awe rune as well as the avenging wrath skill book. The final cloak rune obtainable in phase 4 is shield of righteousness rune. You'll want to head to the Eastern Plaguelands and patrolling around this area between the Undercroft and the Crown Guard Tower, you'll hopefully find a slack-jawed ghoul. Upon killing the ghoul, a mob called Orthas will spawn offering a quest to find the missing hammer in Corin's Crossing. You'll want to come to the second floor of this building and you'll find a hammer in this location. Once you obtain the hammer, you can use the gold tooth in your bags to spawn Orthas, prompting you to recover the missing armor from a corpse of an abomination. Just outside, while still in Corin's Crossing, you'll want to kill abominations until the partially digested plate armor drops. You can then once again spawn Arthas, at which point we'll give you a follow-up quest to obtain a necrotic runestone, which drops from Maleki the Pallid, I think I've said that right, in Strathholm on the undead side. Grab yourself a group and do the strat undead clear, picking up the necrotic runestone, and head to the Undercroft. 
At this location, you'll find a rotting dwarf corpse, which if it's not there, just hang around until the corpse respawns. You'll then hand in the quest and receive a final follow-up, and you'll just have to observe Orthas as he moves on from this world. Now, this part is currently extremely buggy, and you may have to keep on trying to come back, or maybe even layer swap and hope that you get an event that isn't bugged, because if the event is bugged like this, you won't be able to complete the quest and receive the rune. If you get the event that isn't bugged or is patched by the time you're watching this, then you'll get the rune after this event is ended. And that wraps it up for all of the new cloak runes for the Paladin in Phase 4. There are still ring runes that you need to obtain, and I'll show you where the Holy Specialization rune is, which is in the library of the Northern Building in Tyr's Hand, located in the Eastern Plaguelands. The Axe Specialization rune is located in the center of the Blackrock Stronghold in the Burning Steps, and lastly, the Defense Ring rune is located in a room just to the right of the ramp that leads to the Blackrock Spire in this location. If you're not a human and instead a dwarf and would need the ring runes for mace or sword, you can just check a quick guide on Wowhead to find out where they are. And with that, you now have all of the new accessible runes and skill books for Phase 4. I hope this guide has helped you out and thanks for watching.